In this video, I'm going to briefly explain how to square the X and Y axis on the Prusa Mini. For some reason, these instructions are not documented in the official manual at the time of making this video. So I had to perform some trial and error to solve this. That involved a bit of back and forth with the customer services and to apply some of the lessons I've learned from building my own CNC machines into the workflow. So here goes. You should begin by following the official calibration instructions, including adjusting the belt tensioning and the XZ axis skew correction. Once that's done, you'll need to identify if you have a problem with the squareness of your X and Y axes by printing something like this, a 2.5 mm thick square frame, which is 100 mm across in both directions. Once this is printed, you can check this with an engineer square or measure between the diagonals of a caliper. If your print is square, there'll be no gaps and the diagonal measurements will be practically identical. But in my case, while the sides which followed the Y axis were parallel with the markings on the removable bed, the top and bottom of the print, which follows the X axis were skewed. I ended up printing quite a lot of these in the process. I'm now gonna describe the workflow. To start with, you need to ensure the heated bed is on square to the Y axis. To do this, take off the magnetic print surface and loosen, but do not remove the Torx screw securing the heat bed to the undercarriage. Now press the engineer square to the front of the printer and manually move the heat bed so it makes contact with the square. Make sure the square doesn't touch any of the machine screw heads and use the square to compare the left and right sides, ensuring that they're the same before refastening the Torx screws. For this method to work, we're assuming that the printed parts are accurate and the issue is with the assembly. Once that's done, we can use the lines on the heated bed as references when adjusting the overhanging X axis. To adjust the X axis, you need to loosen these four screws. And with the engineer square now on the heated bed, pivot the X axis so the front face lines up with the lines on the heat bed below. I use the engineer square to follow the plane downwards, closest and furthest away from the pivot point. Once I was happy, which took an entire bottle of wine, I tightened the four machine screws. I then re-performed the XZ skew axis compensation and printed another square, which I compared with the methods I described earlier. As you can see, this is much better. There are no gaps, and when I checked the diagonals with the caliper, the difference is around 0.1 of the mil. I also decided to print this cube shape to check if the X and Z sections were leaning forwards or backwards. The print had some problems at the layer where the circles were rejoined, which may have been due to the speed I was printing at. But when I checked it again with my instruments, you can see it was not perfect. One option is to try and strengthen the joint between the X and Z and Y axis with something like this, but that would involve dismantling the machine. Anyway, my printer is more or less usable now and I can get on with making some stuff such as these P-E-A-N-U-T-S, which I made by using photogrammetry techniques to digitize actual real life nuts. I know, it's absolutely nuts. I'm gonna leave this video here. I'll also update the top list of printers that I've used with the Prusa Mini Plus, documenting the pros and cons that I've noticed along the way. And I'll link to that in the description below. If you'd like to see what I'm getting up to with the printer, please check out my Instagram account where you'll see some images of things that I'm making to keep myself sane during this latest period of delayed and avoidable lockdown. And that leaves me with the last thing to say, which is take care, be safe, and you'll catch me in the next one. Thank you.